I want more energy. You want more energy. It's not about caffeine. It's about how we make energy. And one of the most boring things that I ever talk about on this channel is mitochondrial biogenesis. But that's my fault because I make it boring. It's actually one of the most wicked cool things that goes on in our body. And if you learn it, you will understand why I'm not as crazy as you think I am when I'm talking about some of these things like fasting, keto, temporary caloric deprivation, all this kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and let's jump into it. First, hit that red subscribe button and then hit that bell icon. And then after this video, please check out Four Sigmatic, okay? If you are fasting or if you are doing keto or if you're just into just improving your brain a little bit, you've gotta try Four Sigmatic, okay? They've been around for years. They've been a sponsor of this channel for over three years. They were one of the OG sponsors, but it is a lion's mane and sometimes lion's mane and chaga coffee. It is how I start my day. You've probably seen it in my day in the life videos. I almost always start my day with Four Sigmatic, okay? perfect stuff and it has the unique ability to potentially improve what is called brain derived neurotropic factor. What this means is it can help your brain create a little bit more of those neural pathways. So if you're trying to establish new patterns or new habits, it's a great, great thing. There's a reason why people like Tim Ferriss and all those guys talk about using it for cognitive function but I talk about it for improving my fast and just getting more out of my day. So special link with a special discount only for people that watch this channel, okay? So use that link down below in the description and let's get into mitochondrial biogenesis. So mitochondrial biogenesis is in essence what gives us the potential to create more energy. It doesn't literally give us energy. It creates more potential for energy. So think about it like this. The mitochondria is Here's the cliche thing, the powerhouse of the cell, okay? It is how you create energy. But the way that it does this is by creating energy along its surface, okay? Now I want you to envision something. I'm gonna show you an image up on the screen right now. This is what a mitochondria looks like. You see the squigglies in there, the squigglies? That is designed to give us more surface area. So I'm gonna give you an analogy and this will be, I promise, the most complex part of this video. So if you get through this, you get to go to the fun part and you get to watch me be a little bit goofy, okay? Everyone likes Goofy Thomas, kind of not. Okay, so anyway, envision a balloon, okay? That balloon has a surface, right? So the surface area of the balloon is where energy would be created. Well, eventually, you'd run out of surface area, right? Boop, 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 all around that balloon. Eventually, there's no more surface area. You can't create any more energy because you don't have more surface area. Well, evolution saw this happening with a cell and said, wait a minute, we need more surface area. So the mitochondria was created. And the mitochondria has that squiggly, which gives us more surface area. So now envision this, you've got that same balloon, but now envision 200 little balloons inside the balloon. And you can create energy on the surface area of all of them, not just the surface of the balloon, but the surface of every single little balloon. You now have so much more energy potential. So the goal with mitochondrial biogenesis is creating more little balloons inside the balloon. So you have more surface area, so you can get as much as you possibly can. Oh, and by the way, occasionally having a bigger balloon too, but you're not literally creating more mitochondria. That's a different kind of genetic process. So let's talk about Homer Simpson for a minute. Let's talk about town hall and let's talk about the power plant because this is a fun way to do it, okay? I'm a visual learner and I'm gonna make sure that my editors make this really cool and pretty so you can have a visual experience too. Okay, imagine a town. Okay, that town has roads, it has infrastructure, it has a hospital, it has stoplights, stop signs, all kinds of things. All the blueprints for building that are in Town Hall. Town Hall carries the blueprints for the infrastructure of the city. The power plant, on the other hand, contains its own blueprints because the power plant says, hey, I'm kind of a different animal, so I'm gonna contain my own blueprints and keep them here because I'm not really associated with the town, I just provide the energy for the town. Power plant is the mitochondria, town hall is the nucleus, okay? So they're very important together, but they're a little bit autonomous, okay? So now let's take, for example, let's say the town needs to do something, right? Let's say the town, or you know what, better yet, let's say an asteroid hits one part of the town, okay? And it blows up and destroys part of the town. Well, town hall says, okay guys, all hands on deck, let's go ahead and let's get all these blueprints out because we gotta rebuild that part of the town, let's go. And the power plant's just like, mm, yeah, why don't you ask me later? I don't feel like doing it. Uh, town Hall's like, dude, I, I can't rebuild the dang city if you're not gonna give me energy. Well, that's the point in how the mitochondria plays such an important role. Mitochondria holds DNA as well as Town Hall. So if the DNA and the mitochondria isn't cooperating, we are at a deadlock. 
That is why it's so important to take care of your mitochondria. Healthy mitochondria means that the cells can do more. Okay, so metabolic dysfunction, all these kinds of things I talk about, that's what we're talking about. The cell's inability, it may seem like just lip service right now, but when you start feeling like sick and not having energy, uh, yeah, that's what's going on. So call me crazy, whatever. So the point is they have to work together. But what's really interesting is mitochondria have the ability to go through fission and fusion. And this is fascinating. And this is where fasting and ketogenic principles come into play. Not to sound like a zealot, it's just research and it's just biology. Okay, so you've got the mitochondria, right? Okay, well sometimes the mitochondria, like the, the power plant, sometimes Homer Simpson's man in the power plant and a part of it gets all messed up. Like he just forgets something and it gets screwed up. So then you got a decrepit, messed up section of the power plant. Okay, take that over to mitochondria for a second. You've got a portion of the mitochondria that is messed up. Okay, it happens. Well, the interesting thing is the mitochondria has the ability to segregate the messed up sections of itself. So it's kind of like the power plant is able to say, uh-oh, we've got a bunch of messed up employees that are not doing their job. Let's go ahead and let's lock them up in a room because they're causing problems. The mitochondria can do that. It moves them to another side of the mitochondria and says, hey, we got a dang job to do. You get the heck over in your corner and you shut up. So they stay over there. Then here's what happens. Some, the, the mitochondria splits in two and the little decrepit part of the mitochondria floats away and it goes through something called mitophagy. Sound familiar? Okay, well autophagy with fasting allows that to get cleaned up, sucked up, and recycled into other things. So that is why fasting plays such a big role in proper mitochondrial function because it allows the weaker parts to be highlighted. Now the weaker parts are highlighted, they get sucked up and used for something else, and you're left with a clean, albeit smaller, mitochondria. Well now we have a problem. The mitochondria itself is small, but it's clean, so how do we grow it? Well, that's where mitochondrial biogenesis comes in. Okay, that's where specifically kind of depriving yourself of calories and allowing these different activations, which I'll talk about in a second, allows that mitochondria to build mass and be energetic again. So you might get more energy out of the small mitochondria than you did a full-size mitochondria that had messed up waste of space employees in it, right? That sounds bad to say, but the point is these people that didn't do anything, they were just there, okay? But the mitochondria can also do another thing, something that well, I guess I could give an analogy for it too. They can have fusion. Let's say you've got one power plant in city A that does really, really good at creating energy. And then you've got, but they're not so good at, uh, I don't know, maybe getting rid of free radicals, okay? They're not so good at getting rid of waste. Then you've got another power plant that is really, 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 really good at getting waste, getting rid of waste, but it's not too good at building energy. Mitochondria are smart and because they have DNA, they have the ability to call the shots and combine two power plants. So I want the benefits of that power plant because I'm weak over there. So suck it up and create one. That is part of mitochondrial biogenesis as well. So that comes together and then guess what? They both pool together their wasted parts and spit them out and then they get digested and go through mitophagy again. So our body is always trying to find efficiency. It's trying to make our mitochondria more efficient. But if we're constantly bombarding ourselves with things that do not make the mitochondria function well, then, well, we have more mitochondria that are decrepit and less opportunities for fission and less opportunities for fusion and less opportunities to truly make our body run more efficiently. That's why I do, honestly, I talk about things like four sigmatic and things like that because they allow you to fast a little bit easier, right? They allow you to get through that process and be a little bit calorically deprived. Not to mention anecdotally, there's some really cool stuff that you can see with like using things like lion's mane and the benefits on autophagy and stuff like that. So if you're trying to improve autophagy, that might not be a bad way to go to try using that four sigmatic. I know it sounds like a contrived plug and maybe it kind of is, but anyway, check them out. There's that special link down below in the description. I don't want to get overly complicated, but this all comes down to something called PGC1A. Okay. PGC1A is activated when we fast. It's activated when we are liberating fats from the tissues. It is activated when we are in a caloric deficit. It is activated when we need energy. When we're fasting, we don't have a lot of energy, right? So PGC1A gets jacked up and PGC1A is a co-activator that goes to the nucleus and goes to the mitochondria and says, hey guys, time to go. PGC1A is the mayor. It's the mayor of the city who also has some control over the power plant because uh, without the mayor's approval, the power plant can't build, it can't get bigger, 
Okay, so it's very, very important. And how do we activate that? We activate it through fasting. We activate it through caloric deprivation. We activate it through intense exercise because we allow these things to occur. Okay, so anyhow, it's about cleaning up. It's about doing things right. So as always, I highly recommend Four Sigmatic down below. Again, that special discount. Use them to support this channel and to make sure we can keep creating content. And I will see you tomorrow.